This is Susan Wheelbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive, and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hello, bright soul. Thank you so much for joining me on another podcast. I am so filled with gratitude. Thank you so much for being here. I'm having such a wonderful month. You know, I thought that February might be a little bit challenging for me this year just because my birthday is in February and so is my father's. And with him not being in the body this year, it's a little bit different. But every year is an opportunity to have a new experience and to grow. And I'm just having a wonderful month. My daughter and I did a college orientation for her college that she's going to be attending in the fall. And any of you have ever done that with your children or for yourself. I mean, for me, I got my degree at night while working full time. I was in the military when I went to college. So my experience was a little bit different. But these kids all excited and they kind of know what they want to do, but not really. And the information overwhelm and just the excitement of starting a new chapter. I'm really excited for her. And gosh, sitting in all of those college orientations, learning about all the classes and things they offer, I thought, okay, I want to sign up too. (laughs) I don't want to be in the dorm with you, but I want to go to class. This is fun because I just love to learn. That's my personality. But at the same time, it's a little exhausting and overwhelming. So we were kind of spent after a day of doing that. And then the following day in celebration of my birthday, We went to the Russian spa. So I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to attend a Russian spa, but it is very unique. This is the second time that we've went. And I know I have followers and clients from all over the world. And I lived in Turkey for two and a half years, and I never had the opportunity to go to a Turkish bath, which was supposed to be really amazing. But just with work schedule and where I was located in Turkey, I didn't have that opportunity. And then in Colorado, my hair designer, who's also a friend of mine, was telling me about this Russian spa. So a few years ago, we went and tried it, really enjoyed it, but haven't been back. So for my birthday, we went and did a spa day at the Russian spa. And one of the things that's very unique about it is you do this banya. And some of you that are from Russia or have done it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But in addition to the massage, all of their services come with a banya service. So you go into a sauna and they pour eucalyptus and they did lemongrass eucalyptus a couple of mixtures of essential oils over the coals and they do that three different times so you're in the sauna about 10 minutes but that sucker is cranked up and then they come in with these oak leaves and I don't know what they think they're doing they're beating you with the leaves okay let's just be honest (laughs) they're supposed to be opening up the pores and you know I don't even know what they call it brushing it's not brushing they're 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 beating you with the leaves. Let's just keep it real. <laughs> um, and then that part's it's kind of funny and it's just unique, right? And then after your pores are open and the detoxifying is amplified, then they pour honey on you. And then they, there's, well, this time we did two separate banyas. We did two of them. So the first time we showered after and then got a massage. And then the second time they come in after the honey and they pour like ice water on you and it is shocking to the system and so that is supposed to wake you up energize you close the pores you know there's a purpose to all of it and then what's also really cool about it is the way that they do the massages are just a lot different than traditional massage in my opinion you know they were moving my arms certain ways and legs certain ways and geez my masseuse was not playing around I thought uh did someone hurt you and now you're taking it out on me (laughs) because he was actually exhaling to push so hard with his forearms to get knots and things out of my back. And I thought, geez, I mean, there's no knots tight enough for the world for you to be doing that. (laughs) It was very, very intense, but also it was very needed. You know, I tend to lift a lot of weights with my shoulders and my back and I don't stretch those areas as much as my legs just because, you know, I don't really, I might feel tight, but I don't notice it as much as in my legs. So I know that I had a bunch of knots in my back, so it was fine. But um, the other thing is the music that they play, you know, it's not like traditional spa relaxing music. It's more like chill, up-tempo music and 
you know, I, my daughter and I did it together and b- between the two of us, just our commentary, it was just, it was really, really good. It was fun. And when, you know, when you leave those experiences for us, I mean, it's only the second time we went, but you just feel for us, the two of us and anyone I've talked to that have, has been there, just feel very energized and very relaxed and almost like you've had a cleansing. So that was really enjoyable. And I only said all that to say, if you have the opportunity to go to a Russian spa, check it out. It's very unique. You know, the the decor, everything is nothing's traditional about it. So you have to have an open mind and just flow with it. And so that's what we did. So that was really good. And February for me is just one of my favorite months. I love Valentine's Day. And that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about today. Every year around this time, I'll do a podcast about why I love Valentine's Day. The very first year that I did a podcast on Valentine's Day, I had, you know, a really low vibrational, bitter person get upset over what I said about Valentine's Day because I don't care the origins of the holiday. I'm not really familiar. I've heard lots of different explanations about where this comes from. And a lot of people associate it with romantic love only. That is not the way that I celebrate it. I know in the last couple of years, I've seen people come up with a Galentine's Day for friends. But for me, Valentine's Day is a celebration of love. And love is the most powerful vibration on the planet. And you are pure love. You came in as a drop in the ocean of the creator that created all that is. Your soul is connected to the most powerful vibration on the planet. Love. You are love and you are very loved. And so for me, this month and this holiday is all about love in all forms. Kindness. Peace, compassion, joy, the highest vibration on the planet. And I actually really enjoy seeing all of the hearts and the scent, the sweet sentiments. And I, I know a couple of people that get real bitter around this time of year. I used to be married to one um, who was incredibly bitter about Valentine's Day and said it was all about commercialism and their mindset is on the ego and the material possessions. And, and maybe that is why it was created. I don't know. But here's what I do know. There is a such thing called thought forms, a massive thought form. And when you have a huge group of people with their attention focused on one thing, and in this instance, it is love, or and sometimes it's gift giving, sometimes not, or celebrating one another or expressing sentiments, you know, um, that it creates a huge energy. And that's why I like Christmas. You know, people will say, well, Jesus wasn't born on Christmas. It's, you know, and they go on and on and on. I'm like, you know, all of that may be true. And I'm not discrediting that. And everybody has the right in the, in, they can be validated in their own feelings and their right to feel, think how they want. But what I love about Christmas is the celebration of a spiritual nature of something higher, of being grateful, a holiday that is collectively celebrated for people to slow down to think about other people how can I give people are generally more um, generous during the holidays and I love the energy of that so my take is even if you don't give anything to anyone or you don't get anything doesn't matter if you didn't get anything it's because you didn't need it because guess what you are the embodiment of the holiday (laughs) and that is that is love and with all of this transition and loss and nuttiness going on in the world, wouldn't it be nice to give yourself the gift of sitting quietly and tuning into and aligning with the vibration of love, the highest vibration on the planet, which for me is what I focus on for Valentine's Day. Now, over the years, if you've followed my podcast, you'll hear some repeating here because it's what I do hasn't changed. So for Valentine's Day, I've spent more Valentine's Day uncoupled than coupled. And I am okay with that because it is not about a partnership. You are going to be with yourself longer than you will be with any other individual on the planet, period. And your soul is going to go with you when this body passes away. So for me, Valentine's Day, what is it? Love and appreciation first for myself for how far I've come for my journey, gratitude, gratitude for all that I have, all that's to come, gratitude for everything, my my ability to walk, that I have food to eat, that I have people in my life that I love and that love me. I mean, you can go down to the most 
minimalist detail because none of it is really minimal. And then um, when you start creating that momentum of gratitude, of course, I'm going to always connect with my source. That's day one, always day one. That's not what I meant. As soon as I wake up in the morning and also day one. <laughs> um, and then doing things like, okay, so my daughter, my sweet little rescue cat who I love and adore, my friends, my family members, my coworkers, anyone I see on the street, my neighbors. Oh my gosh, I love my neighbors. And guess what? Your possessions have an energy. Houses have an energy. Cars have an energy. Yes, I know that it's going to stay here when you leave. But the impact and the care that you give will be given back to you. So even that. And I, I always share, Dr. Wayne Dyer years ago said that he used to buy the children's Valentine's cards and pass them out to strangers to just light their day up. It can be as simple as sending a text message to someone just saying, I really appreciate you. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for all you do. Happy Valentine's Day. I mean, you could really get creative about showing gratitude to yourself and to others and participate in the collective consciousness that is aimed at love on Valentine's Day. And one of the things that I just won't even touch, and I'm not going to play the game, I'm not going to get do a pity party with people, is though the people that sit and feel sorry for themselves because they're not in a relationship on Valentine's Day. And it doesn't matter if it's a breakup or they haven't met anyone because I've been around those people before and they're such Debbie Downers and they're missing the entire point, in my opinion. Now, I will say, when I was young, that was me. Before I knew all the things that I know now, I used to think that it was just about being in a relationship and I had such low self-esteem. I was focused on not being chosen, you know, and that was teenager Susan, you know. Um, adult Susan who has stepped into who she is and I have more understanding because I've, I've lived, I've lived since then, knows that it's really what you make of it and it's what you choose to focus on. So do something nice for yourself, whether that is meditating. I have so many beautiful meditations and healings on my YouTube channel that can help with this and we're going to do one on this podcast sitting and just letting someone know, I appreciate you. Thank you for being in my life. Tuning in to the collective vibration of love is so helpful. You can do things like volunteer at an animal shelter. Let somebody that you know that is hurting, let them know that they are loved and that you're thinking about them. These things can be so impactful. You could really help shift someone else and in the process, you're also going to be shifting yourself on this day. And if you're someone who is wanting to be in a relationship and feeling sorry for yourself, which is, I think, what I started to say, know that we are in a swift, fast-moving environment. So instead of feeling sorry for yourself, actually take advantage of this opportunity to prepare yourself for what is coming and shift your vibration to knowing that if a relationship is what it is that you want to have, then focus on the feeling of what that's going to feel like when you have it. If you start feeling sorry for yourself or you're hating on or despising people that are in happy relationships, you're out of alignment with the vibration of a happy relationship. So you cannot align with what you despise or knock down. So this is a time to get really clear and conscious about what are the predominant vibrations that I am resonating with and sitting in. Because if you're wanting to have a relationship or you're feeling lonely, get into the vibration of knowing that. It's all about energy. So you want to align with the energy of knowing that you are fulfilled and that you can have a relationship. There's billions of people on the planet. And if you want it and desire it, then it's available to you. But it's not going to come from a desperate energy. It will come from a magnetic energy. And I know I've done other podcasts about that. And so try to take advantage of this particular holiday. Think about how many years you've already been alive on the planet and how many years are different for you, how things can shift so quickly in a moment. So it's so important to be grateful for this moment that we have today. And anytime that I can tune into the collective vibration of what I want most in my life, which is love, I'm so excited about it. And I love it. I love it. And it has nothing to do with relationships. I want to say that again, because I can feel some people getting really activated about me saying, even if you're not in a relationship, you can still celebrate this day and 
tune into the collective vibration of love. So the other thing I've shared in previous podcasts on Valentine's Day or around Valentine's Day is that my friends that are in relationships, whether they're happy or not, when they are celebrated by anyone, their parents, their loved ones, and they want to share it with me, I am so excited because I tune into their vibration of feeling appreciated and I love and appreciate them too. So my goal is to add to that and amplify that and make them feel as loved and appreciated as they are, even more so, not by the person that they're sharing it with for me, or what am I trying to say here? I want them to know, okay, like just for example, if I have a friend that's calling and telling me that her spouse did something nice for her, I want her to know that not only is he grateful for you, I'm grateful that he did that for you, and I'm also grateful for you. So I want them to hang up feeling even more excited and more loved than when they first called me. What I notice people doing is, So, because I've noticed it in collective where someone will say, oh, such and such got me these flowers. Oh, isn't that nice? Well, I didn't get that or I, stop it. Stop it. This isn't about you right now. I understand you might be feeling those things, but why don't you do something different and step into an alignment of being so happy for someone else, knowing that yours is on the way, because if they have it, you can have it too. And we're all on this path. We're in the fishbowl together, but we all have collective or separate journeys. Even though we're collective, we have separate little journeys and things we're working out. And instead of taking it as feeling sorry for yourself, elevate the vibration. So I'm, I'm sure that I've just probably just completely reiterated that until you're nauseated. <laughs> but it's important, especially with what has been going on for the past two years. This has been craziness in the world, absolute craziness. And I've watched so many people teeter and back and forth and, and everyone has suffered a transition. I I don't want to say suffered. Everyone has experienced a transition and went through some major loss in my world. I don't know anyone that hasn't went through something over these two years. So what more reason do we need than to say, I love you. Thank you so much for still being here, for being a light in my life. Thank you for being on the light team. Thank you for showing up and for being here for other people and for myself and for yourself. And isn't it amazing that we're still here and that we're still going and that we are still pursuing the high road, the light, the truth, empowerment, loving each other in spite of so many people wanting to just turn on each other and be ugly. You and I are still here endeavoring to continue to stay on our mission of kindness and light and love. And so that's all I had to offer. Let's go into a healing. So please just uncross your arms and legs. I want to flood you with so much love. And I want you to feel how loved you are. You are so very loved. And I also just want to send the energy for you to align with whatever it is that you're wanting because you deserve that. And I don't care if it's a relationship, a friendship, a job, whatever it is, just sending the energy that you align with that and that it comes in for you rapidly and properly. Okay, and so it is. And here's my challenge to you, if it feels good. Spend 40 seconds to two minutes tuning into the collective vibration of love. Really get into the vibration of feeling 
all that is good, the unconditional vibration of love that we all came from. That's number one. Number two, do something kind for yourself. Do something that makes you feel loved and cherished and cared for. Any self-care, doesn't matter what it is. The third thing is something nice for someone else. This could be smiling at a stranger, feeding a stray animal, holding the door for someone, sending just a nice thought, a nice message, anything. Everything matters. And I don't know about you, but I've had moments in my life where I just felt so defeated and down and someone just said something very simple and kind that shifted my whole day and I remember it to this day. I still remember it. You never know who needs just that tiny act of kindness and how meaningful and impactful that can be for other people. So please do not discount or discredit how valuable you are and how much of a difference and impact you can make in the lives of other people. And also leave some of that sympathy and kindness and compassion for yourself because you also deserve it and you need to have your cup full so that you can do all these good works and complete the mission that you have been sent here to complete. So that is all I have. If you haven't left me a review on iTunes, I would so appreciate it. And thank you so, so very much for showing up. I appreciate you. I am sending you heaps of love and I hope you have a beautiful week. Take care. Bye-bye.